So what's another subtle form of uh, work salvation? And I, I didn't have this on my list, but after the Jehovah's Witnesses visited me yesterday, I added this one to my list because it is very common in our churches. And I hope you can see it as I go through these subtle forms of work salvation. I'm turning up the heat and I'm getting closer to home of what the things that we hate. But this one is, it's only faith, right? It's, it's, it's only believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but it must be a genuine faith, right? It has to be a real faith. It has to be a saving faith. And what do they mean by that? It means that you have to have works. You know, uh, clear, that's what they are, they are trying to say. Because they say it's only by faith, but when they say it must be a genuine faith, all they're doing is re redefining the word faith and adding works to salvation. And where do they get this idea from? They get it from James 2, and it's a misunderstanding of James 2. But let's just look at a couple of verses here in James 2. I'm not going to go through the whole chapter. But look from verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou. I just want you to note those words. Seest thou. So who's seeing the faith here? Thou. The thou referring to the brethren that he's addressing this letter to. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by, faith, by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then, right? You see. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And you know, a lot of people are mixing up faith with works because of James 2, because they're mix, mixing up the difference between having a saving faith and a genuine faith, which is a faith that's on the Lord Jesus Christ that is able to save you, and having a profitable or living faith, which is what James 2 is teaching. Because if you have faith, but you don't have works, it's not going to profit anyone. It's not going to be alive. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. It doesn't say that the believer is dead. It says that the faith is dead. So faith without works is dead because you can have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, but your faith be dead because it doesn't have any works. You're still saved. Your faith is not alive. It's not a living faith. It's a dead faith. Because let's compare this passage to Romans 4. Romans 4. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? Remember, James 2 seemed to allude that Abraham was justified by works. For, because if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory but not before God. So remember in James 2, it says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by, and by works faith was made perfect. Ye see then how that a man is justified by faith without works, uh, justified by, by works. But the Bible says here in Romans 4, we need to understand, it says, Abraham, if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. See, our works do not show our faith to God. Our works show our faith to other men. That's why we can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and not have any works and still be saved. And we read this before. Let's read it again. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. And, you know, I, I was talking about this with the Jehovah's Witnesses that came to my door yesterday. And I showed them Romans 4, 5, because that, you know, James 2 is obviously the first passage they would go to when you say, you know, do you believe in work salvation? They'll say, well, faith without works is dead. So then I asked them, well, then how do you explain Romans 4? And I read it to them in their Bible because it says not exactly the same thing, but it basically says the same thing that, you know, salvation is by faith apart from works. Um, and it says, you know, God imputes righteousness apart from works. So it's very clear even in their Bible that Romans 4 is teaching that you need to believe and that salvation is by believing on him that justified the godly and not by works. So I said this to them and it was funny because she kept tripping up 
believe, say, trying to say that she believes salvation by faith because you can't deny, like we said in the beginning, you can't deny that the Bible says that salvation is not by works, it's by faith. So when I ask her, well, do you believe salvation is by faith? She'll say, yeah, it's by faith. She'll say, she said, oh, we're like this compared to God. And, and you know, we can never make ourselves perfect. But then when I asked her the question, well, what if you were to quit the Jehovah's Witness Church? What if you were to leave that religion and turn your back on God? And I, and I don't say, would you still go to heaven? I say, would you still make it to that resurrection? And she didn't answer straight away. She had to think about it. And I just said to her, see, the reason why you're thinking about it is because you're still basing your salvation on your works. It doesn't matter that you say that you believe salvation is by faith. The fact that you are considering your own works whether or not you'll make it to that resurrection, shows that you have your faith in your works. And it's funny because she kept saying that salvation was by faith, salvation was by grace, it's nothing that we can earn. But yet she kept turning to passages to try and promote work salvation. You know, if you believe salvation is by faith, why do you keep turning to James 2? Why do you keep turning to Matthew 24 where it says, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. You know, Matthew 25 where it says, Oh, he'll divide the sheep and the goats, and they're divided by their works. If you don't believe that salvation is by works, why do you keep going to verses to preach work salvation? Obviously, you have the wrong understanding of those passages, and you need to rethink what those passages mean because it's not going to contradict the clear teaching in Scripture that salvation is not by works. So this subtle form of work salvation, yes, you only have to believe, but you only truly believe if you have this genuine faith. And what they mean by that is that you have works. 